one of the world's most respected companies. A powerful brand known around the globe for quality and innovation. A technology company helping shape a new era of mobility. For 125 years, the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company has been essential to keeping the world moving. But in 1898, it was nothing more than two empty factories on Market Street in Akron, Ohio, USA. That's when 38-year-old Frank Cyberlink bought the distressed assets and soon found himself in the rubber business. F.A. Frank Cyberling and his brother C.W. Charlie Cyberling were the company founders and brought an entrepreneurial mindset to their new business. Their spirit of discovery was represented by Charles Goodyear, an inventor responsible for the vulcanization of rubber and the inspiration for the new company. The company's first sale was on December 1, 1898, $25.80 worth of rubber sundries. By 1900, annual sales already had eclipsed $1 million. In 1900, the Cyberlings hired Paul Litchfield to oversee production as its factory superintendent. Litchfield went on to become one of the most important figures in Goodyear history, serving the company over the span of six decades. Together, these three were largely responsible for establishing the foundation of Goodyear's success. Well, I'd like to start and talk about a statement that the wonderful uh, Paul Litchfield made, a business is like an individual. It has a head, heart, and hands. And the heart is just as important as the head and the hands. And the reason the heart is important is a company can have a very successful product, but if it doesn't have employees back home that respect each other, can work together, and most importantly, solve problems, that that company will probably not be sustainable. Now, of course, this is setting the stage for that dynamic team of F.A. and C.W. Cyberling. And F.A. was considered the head with his brilliance and genius for business. And C.W. was the heart with his brilliance for human relations. Bicycle and carriage tires were the main products that carried Goodyear through its first few years supplemented by other items such as horseshoe pads, rubber bands, golf balls, and poker chips. That was followed by a wave of product innovation spurred by the growth of the automobile. In 1901, Litchfield's Straight Side Tire, marketed as the No Rim Cut, was Goodyear's first tire innovation. Six years later, Goodyear introduced its first all-weather tread design, featuring diamond-shaped blocks for better traction. The tread pattern became one of the company's best known and would be its leading design into the 1940s. Company expansion also began in the early 1900s. Goodyear initiated a plan to build more factories, including Plant 2, which is now part of today's Akron campus and facilities around the world including manufacturing plants in Los Angeles and Bowmanville, Ontario, business in London, and a farm in Arizona to grow cotton, an important component in early automotive tires. The company even established a new residential community in Akron, as Goodyear Heights was developed under Frank Cyberling's leadership. Through Goodyear's formative years, its spirit of innovation and opportunity helped establish the new company as the tire industry leader. By 1916, the company could legitimately claim that more people ride on Goodyear tires than any other kind. Then came an inflection point, World War I. The United States government persuaded Goodyear to support the war effort by manufacturing non-tire products, from airships to gas masks. Beginning in 1917, more than 6,000 Goodyear employees served in the armed forces, depleting the company's production labor. So, to keep operations moving, 
Goodyear hired new workers, including older men and women, to work wherever they could. Goodyear also hired workers who were deaf, deploying them in factories where they were not affected by the noise of tire building. The war also accelerated development of pneumatic tires for military trucks. To prove the tire's dependability beyond the military, a Packard truck was outfitted with Goodyear pneumatic tires, hauling products and components from Akron to Boston and back. Thus, in 1917, the Wingfoot Express was born. It became one of Goodyear's best-known icons and established the first interstate trucking route. The end of the war triggered a new era of prosperity, and Goodyear's focus was now on serving the U.S. auto industry. In 1920, Goodyear supplied almost half of all the original equipment tires on American-made cars. As successful as it was, Goodyear's early history was not without challenges. And in 1920, the hard times of the Depression were looming. But thanks to smart and steady leadership, outstanding products, a commitment to innovation, and a spirit of finding a way to respond to every obstacle, the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company was poised to thrive. People are working together to support each other and uh, are dealing with issues that are very critical to society today, and that makes you proud. For the more than 100 years that followed, Goodyear remained essential to enabling mobility around the world, just as it is today. Thank you.